an empty gun. Why do we want this? Well, we're getting a new handgun. A very good handgun, I will also add. And in this locker, we use a special key, yes we will. And we find ourselves there's one outfit that should fit you. We will change our clothes, because I love this outfit. Just gotta wait a moment. Yes, unlike Resident Evil 1, you have to complete the game in order to get your outfit. There's an old gun here. And it is the Colt Single Action Army. Six rounds. More than enough to kill anything that moves. Anyway, this is our new outfit. What do you think? Nice, uh, nice biker attire. I also agree with the use of having a jacket and jeans in a zombie apocalypse. Because running around in short shorts and a cutoff is not very smart. Anyway, let's put the handgun away. Because this is going to be our new toy. We'll put one green herb away for now. And we also got more handgun ammo. So pros and cons of the Colt Single Action Army. One, it fires really fast. And it does slightly more damage than a regular handgun. It's also got an awesome animation, look at that. But there is the problem of the reload time and the fact you've only got six bullets. So, Operation Report 2. Early morning, 2.30am. Zombies overran the Operation Room and another battle broke out. We lost four more people, including David. We're down to four people, including myself. We failed to secure the weapons cache and our hope for survival continues to diminish. It won't last much longer. We've agreed on a plan to escape through the sewer. There's a path leading from the precinct underground to the sewage po disposal of the plant. We should be able to access the sewers through here. The only main drawback is that there's no guarantee the sewage disposal plant is free of any possible dangers. We, are, we know our chances in the sewers are slim, but anything is better than simply waiting here to die. In order to buy more time, we lock the only door leading to the underground, which is located in the eastern office. We left the key behind in the western office. It's unlikely that any of those creatures have the intelligence to fight it and unlock the door. Oh, you just wait. I pray this operation report will be useful to whoever may find it. Well, it is, because we know that you're the reason why we can't get out of here, and you've added an extra half hour to our game time. Any hum. Let's get out of here. We're going to clear out this hallway. Look at that. Look at how awesome that is. Quickly reload. Luckily this thing can juggle zombies like a like it's nobody's business. Now you may be crying how much ammo I'm using here, but uh, trust me, we will not be running out of ammo anytime soon. Is that all of them? Yes it is. Now we're doing on bullets. Look at that, we've got 29 bullets already. Plus a full clip. Well, full chamber I guess you could say for a revolver. I'm not sure what the correct term is for a revolver. Full cylinder. Come on, let's head up. And we have ourselves what is always in a Resident Evil game, a block pushing puzzle. Gotta make these statues face the main statue, I guess you could say. Always like in these uh, these sorts of games, you can always tell what object is the one you want to interfere with. Because they're the only ones that are rendered in real time where everything else is pre-rendered. Luckily the graphics are slightly improved from the original Resident Evil, so the pop-out between them is as bad as it was in the original. Trust me, that thing was bad if you've ever seen my original playthrough. Quick plug for that here. Game up, push the statue. So where's my history of Resident Evil 2 come from? Well, I didn't play this game as much as I did 1 because I didn't really have access to it. Resident Evil 2 was kind of something I found out about once YouTube came along and I started watching more playthroughs for it. Because the original Resident Evil was the one I always played the most. That's the co version I got from my late grandmother and it's the version that I got introduced to the series with. I can always mess that up. Anyway, um, so yeah, I didn't get Resident Evil 2 until much later when I was you know, going around eBay and managed to find a boxed double disc copy I boxed original copy for about twenty pounds with manual and with the manual and the jewel case. Here's the version I'm playing this off of, as you can tell by all the skipping and the very loud computer fan as my computer slowly melts trying to run a game from nineteen ninety seven. Ninety seven or ninety eight this game came out. I wanna say ninety eight. 
Like, early, either late 97, early 98. I'm going to have to remember that. Anyway, to the stars office. See what we can find. Hopefully some stars. Well, there's nobody in here. But I tell you what, there is a grenade launcher. Look at that, we're half after, we're barely 20 minutes into the game and we've already got a grenade launcher. What's around here? Various trophies. One of them reads, Marksman Contest winner, Chris Redfield. I call Bull Honky on Chris being the best marksman. Hey look, we got the stars members. Using guns that are not available in any Resident Evil game. Oh, until four, I, uh, until five, I guess. That's when you got machine guns. Uh, those around here somewhere. Okay, well, where is it? There it is. New some handgun bullets. Fun fact: if you check that desk, I think it's like forty-seven times or something. But if you check it enough times, eventually you find a hidden roll of film that you can develop in that save room that we found. A replica of a gun. The owner's probably a member of the NRA. Topical? Ooh, what's this? Chris's diary. August 8th. I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that Umbrella conducted T-virus research in that mansion. Anyone affected turns into a zombie. Well, I'm pretty sure you know for certain. You saw it yourself. Although the entire mansion went up in that explosion, along with any incriminating evidence. Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one's willing to talk about the incident. Looks like I'm running out of options. August 17th, we've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. Victims appear to have been attacked by a group of at least ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. Sorry, this must be the work of Umbrella. Oh, August 24th, with the help of Jill and Barry, but mostly Barry, I imagine, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research on a new G-Virus, a ver variation of the original T-Virus. Have they done enough damage already? We talked it over, and decided to fly to the main Umbrella HQ in Europe. I won't tell my sister about this trip, because doing so could put her in danger. Please forgive me, Flynn. The Chris's diary has been filed. Great typo there. So, Chris has decided not to tell us anything, but left us to come and investigate anyway. Well, we got a unicorn medal, which looks like a giant penny. Anything else around here? Several files. Unopened cardboard boxes. So this is, what do we call it, Rebecca's desk. As you can tell by the first aid stuff, and the fact it's a rookie desk. I believe this is a picture of a young man. There's a good chance it's her boyfriend. So that's Jill's desk, and apparently Jill's got a boyfriend. Disorganized and tidy reflects you and his personality. Nice way to think, say that about your brother. Is that a dartboard on the wall? Oh, hello. Okay, here's something I'd never got. They say at the beginning, like, you know, oh, the radio's out, or, like, the f you know, phone lines are down and everything. Yeah, apparently the faxes can get through just fine. Federal Police Department Internal Investigation Report. Mr. Chris Redfield. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation to discover the following information. Regarding the G-Virus currently under development of Umbrella Inc. So far as Inc. unconfirmed that the G-Virus even exists. We are continuing with our investigation. Regarding Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of, oh, hang on, sorry, of the Raccoon City Police Department, Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds in bribes from Umbrella Inc. over the last five years. He was apparently involved in the cover-up of, of the Mansion Lab case, along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. So they know about the Mansion incident. Mr. Irons has been arrested on suspicion of rape on two separate counts during his years as a university student. He underwent psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges, but was released due to circumstantial evidence as well as his phenomenal academic standing. Is that a thing that you get in America? Like, you know, you commit crimes, but you get away with it because you're a good student? If it does, it explains a lot about America. As such, extreme caution is advised when dealing with him. Jack Hamilton. In, uh, people not doing anything. So, from the looks of things, we're dealing with this on our own. GR8. So now we have the Unicorn Medal, which allows us to summon unicorns. No joke, no joke. We use that at the beginning of the game. Well, not beginning of the game, beginning of the police station, where there was a statue with a little recess we could use. We're going to need that recess so we can continue on. So down, down, and deeper and down we go. 
kind of says a lot about this game, the fact we've already got the grenade launcher. And we've also already got so much ammo, and how many things we killed. I mean, how many zombies did we actually kill in the original Resident Evil? I think we killed more now than we did throughout the, like, the entire game. You know, you didn't really get, like, big groups of zombies in that game. Like, maybe you got, like, two or three in a room at a time. Oh! Clingy zombie arms! You are not going to turn this into zombie flesh eaters. You are not putting me onto a spiky wall. Or a spike of wood, I guess you could say. Now, we've got to be very careful, because our friend Mr. Hunter is still around. But like I said, if we walk and avoid him, we should be fine. Now we run. Luckily, he takes so long with his roaring and his jumping and things that he completely ignores us. Well, misses us, I guess you used to say. We won't really have to worry about him. And out vigor. And through into the hallway. Luckily, there's no smoking sign that we saw there, so we won't be having to deal with any smoke or zombies. I just say the soundtrack in this game is great. I know it's a random point, but yeah, but this is a really great soundtrack. Anyway, old fountain, something was written here. To obtain the key, you must open your heart. I'll wait for the unicorn, the beautiful beast. By that I mean shove this giant penny into the slot. FMV Why would you design your police station like this? This makes even less sense in the Spencer Mansion. At least that had the justification of a rich man with a lot of money who likes spy movies. In this one, it's literally, we have designed our publicly, you know, our publicly accessible police station to be running on puzzle logic. Tell ya. Police officer people. It's like, I know the explanation as to why this place is so randomly designed is because it was built from a museum, but at the same time, what museum has all of these things? Things nice and slow so we don't av awaken Mr. Licker. Luckily, Mr. Licker will never be as bad as Mr. Mr. Hunter. There are still my sworn enemies. And we want into this door. And yes, just like Resident Evil 1, we've got to find a series of keys to proceed. Only instead of being based off, what do you call it? Only instead of being based off of. You know, a sword, a shield, armor, and things like that. These ones are based on suits. And we're also going to get another old favorite of the Resident Evil series right here. We are going to get... The Crank! Why does a crank in a police station? I have no idea. And why it's in the evidence locker? I have even less of an idea, but... Well, not the evidence locker, but in this data storage thing with a lot of film all over the floor. But oh well. Maybe, maybe it's like one of those like, maybe some of the evidence is on like a uh, gramophone, and they actually need to, they need the crank in order to hand crank it to run their evidence. I don't know. Clearly run, Clary run, Clary run, run, run. Zombies gonna get you. Hope you've got a gun. Bang, bang, bang. Groan, groan, groan. Run, Clary, run, Clary, run, run, run. A little bit of musical, musical interpretation going on there for you. There's a lot of back and forth between this game. Kind of makes you wish it, you had, like, you didn't have to go through so many doors in order to get everywhere. But what can I say? Gives me more time to talk about things. Things that I'm quickly running out of. Anyway, um. <laughs> Where am I there? It's important also to note that there are two versions of Resident Evil 2 available to you through, what do you call it, on the PlayStation. There's the original, which I am playing, and then there's the DualShock Edition, which has, as you can imagine, DualShock controls. Ah! And it's a zombie! And a small child. Help me! Yes. A survivor in this place. 
And don't be an idiot, don't run into the zombie. Dad, darn it, I said don't run into the zombie. I had to wait for the loading screen in order to figure out if I ran into him or not. So we use our precinct key. Once again, we have telepathic knowledge of knowing whether or not a key is useless. Let's see if we can find that girl. Oh, hey, they turned into a guy. Leon. Oh, it's just Leon. Claire, you got changed in the, like the, the half hour I left you. Claire, you made it. Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Short, brown hair, just turned eight. Yeah, My daughter. Yeah, missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, look at the I'll go size of that revolver. You go and find it's like the size of a here. thigh. Course. That was that thing only taken hands and radio. Huh. Radio. That way we What's can going on with that radio? Comes up. And we have a quick check up here. That's where Sherry... Well, that's why the girl ran off. Her name is... Oh, well, I just spoiled her name, didn't I? <laughs> I haven't played this game too much. Anyway. We have our handgun rounds. And we will be seeing that girl again soon. Okay, I want load up game. There we go. Bye, Leon. Lock desk. We will use this lock pick in order to get flame rounds. Who doesn't love flame rounds? Now, there's one important feature of Resident Evil 2 that they never really brought back into any other games. It's this thing called the zapping mechanic. Now, the important thing about Resident Evil 2 is that there are two scenarios in the game. Scenario A and Scenario B. Now, according to... Um, what do you call it? According to the game, both scenarios are running at the same time, which doesn't really match up with certain things, like why certain objects, why certain events happen at certain times, and things like that. But uh, anywho, pretty much what it means is that not only will you run to the other character several times throughout, but when you're playing as them, what things that happen in scenario A will affect what happens in scenario B. So, for example, um, later on in the game, there are two items that you can collect. You can grab a submachine gun, and you can grab a side pack for additional space in carrying things. Now, you can take either none, one, or both of those objects, and whatever you leave behind becomes available to the other character in Scenario 2. Let me get slide these two to the right. Us our plaque. The not of the teeth kind. Yes, yeah, so we got So instead of having the crests of the first game to get to the next area, we have these three clay blocks, I guess you could say. Come here, let's get on out of here. And you know while we're here, we're gonna run upstairs and we're gonna do something in one of the rooms. It's kinda preemptively organizing things here. Because we're missing an item to use in this particular room, but we can come back later, so may as well do it now. Saves me having to carry around, in this case, a crank. And you know, what? we're gonna clear him out using our new grenade launcher. Wait for it. Got him. Didn't take a hit at all. Yeah, let's spin up this. And into here. Which we will find. Do 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 do. Some kind of clock tower gear room thing. Anyway, this is what we need the crank for. Ah, I love that sound. And that brings down the staircase. The staircase we don't need to go up to yet because we do not actually have the item we need to use up there, so we will return to this room later. I just want to get rid of the crank. Bong. Okay, running on out, 
let's go back down. I do like how you can see, it's like, you know, you can see underneath where everything is. Is there anything up here from what I remember? No, no, there isn't. Yeah, I do like how you can see, like, down to the other floors. It's a nice touch. Oh no, because it's pretty rendered, you can't see the zombies that are down there, so... Yeah, well, nothing's perfect. hand cannon. Look, 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 it's been trailing that thing on the floor. Dirty Harry would be proud of that gun. Yeah, we got our revolver out. Ah, oh, that was a grenade launcher again. I wonder if it's trailing on the floor. Anyway, there's a few zombies here we're gonna want to clear out. Like him. So something important that we can activate here. An emergency ladder. That allows us to get to and from the second, the first floor and the ground floor without having to worry about you know, going through all those staircases and things. Very useful. Say, did I somehow miss him? Does what if I had auto aim on? Oh no, he took the extra bullet. Yeah, when you don't kill them when they drop down the first time, they do take a few extra shots. But, uh, no, I mean, look at that, we still got 40 bullets. You're gonna be using this angle actually for quite a bit of the game. some stuff that we can dump here, and also, importantly, we got a lighter. Always useful to have. And another book to read. Secretary Diary A. April 6th. I accidentally moved one of the stone statues on the second floor when I was leaned against it. When the chief found out about it, he was furious. I swear the guy nearly bit my head off, screaming at me never to touch the statue again. So important, maybe you should put it op out in the open like that. Got another good point. April 7th. I heard that all the art pieces from the Chief's collection are rare items, literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know what is the bigger mystery. Where he finds those tacky things? I'm always getting the money to pay for them. May 10th. I'm surprised to see. I wasn't surprised to see the Chief come in today with yet another large picture frame in his hands. This time it's a really disturbing painting of depicting a nude person being hanged. I was appalled by the expression on the Chief's face as he leered at that painting. Why anyone would consider something like that a work of art is beyond my comprehension. Eh, we've all got those weird bosses that like weird art of women being hung. Don't you? Anyway, put, we're gonna put away the grenade launcher, like that, and we'll keep the jewel for now. We, no, I always forget. Because we're going to actually need that in a moment. Head on out. Hello, zombie. Goodbye, zombie. Oh, no, he's still with her. You want to say hello again? Whoa, no, flaming zombie, flaming zombie. Whoa, that's close. Okay, we're not, we don't go that way yet. I forgot about the fire. Shows how much I remember this game. Yeah, I'm not going for a speedrun like I did with Resident Evil 1, mainly because, um, what do you call it? Mainly because I want to actually re read the text and things, I don't want to just skip over everything. Yeah, because I like this game, I don't want to rush through it too much. Anyway, hello birds. Whoa, hello, way too many birds. Hello, birds. Hitchcock, you've done it again! Okay. Da -da, da -da, 